Hey, I'm Alicia from mobilitymastery.com and today I'm going to show you how to release your erector fascia. You're going to use a tennis ball for this one. This is my absolute preferred tool for this. I have actually tested uh, a lacrosse ball here as well as a different, um, like a rad ball, a different kind of texture um, and density. And the lacrosse ball and the rad ball, th those other balls just felt too, like too intense, too, I don't know, potentially risky for the spine. There's just a lot of nerves in that area and they're gonna ping you with warning signals if you're getting too close to your spine. But the tennis ball seems just fine. It's pretty forgiving. It's nice and squishy. Uh, but also, you're gonna actually be able to grip through your clothing and grab some of that skin and superficial fascia. And similar to another technique I have using the tennis ball here for the QLs, uh, with the erectors, we don't want to, we're, not really looking for adhesions and trying to compress and shear them so much here. It's difficult to do that on your own on the ground with a tool. But what we can do, which is really beneficial with that, um, you know, kind of superficial fascia and some of those deeper layers is kind of grab it because this is textured, it's going to actually grab your clothing a little bit and then through the clothing, your skin, that superficial fascia and some of those deeper layers. And then there's going to be, just a little bit of a twisting or grabbing motion side to side where it almost like wrings it out a little bit <laughs> like a rag. Uh, and so that's gonna bring, you know, water into the area. It's gonna activate some of those fascia sites. Uh, it's gonna also do the pin in um, stretch, activating fibroblasts and bring some blood in. So uh, we're not looking to necessarily shear fascial fibers per se. Um, we're just trying to maybe separate some fibers with that twisting motion um, if we can, and then just try to release some of that erector fascia if it's super bound up by the spine. Uh, so a couple disclaimers here, similar to anything in the low back, I don't want you to use this one if you have back pain, if you have low back pain specifically. Um, and typically if you're gonna release your erectors, it's gonna be somewhere in kind of that low uh, back and then up into the mid back a little bit. Uh, and if you're super tight there, or you feel like there's a muscle just like clenched, hanging on, uh, maybe way tighter and more developed even than the muscle or erector on the opposite side, um, it's likely an indication that there's a compensation pattern happening and it's not the root cause. So I always want you to find the root cause first before you go to some of these other areas. Um, this one has less of a warning disclaimer than the QL low back pain, but I still want you to Use caution and don't do this one if you have low back pain, especially if this is the first time you're landing on my channel and you're looking to use this for back pain relief. I would instead go to one of my other techniques that's gonna look at your quad or your quad hip flexor fascia or your adductor fascia, um, maybe the IT bands or the hamstrings. Those are my usual go-tos for problem solving low back pain, which is usually a result of pelvic instability uh, and that's why your back is kind of pinging you with that pain signal, but your back isn't the problem. Um, so why you should do this one might be a couple of people immediately come to mind that I know that tend to, you know, I might call it overtrain, but train pretty aggressively in the gym, their posterior chain. So maybe they're working on, you know, that entire posterior chain from their cervical, you know, spine all the way down to the lumbar and the sacrum as well as all the way down through the hamstrings, through deadlifting and other things. If you're one of those people, then you could definitely use this technique. Most of us, however, aren't overtraining our posterior chain. Um, and so these muscles can get fascially restricted. So the fascia in that muscle uh, of the erectors can kind of start hanging on for dear life or develop some adhesions or tightness due to actually getting overstretched or not worked out enough. So if you're here trying to problem solve back pain, uh, I, I would encourage you again to go look for the root cause in your legs and then potentially strengthen your posterior chain. So before I show you the technique, I'm gonna show you what we're actually targeting here. So we're going after 
the erectors, which are right alongside the spine. So there's my spine. I don't want to be on the spine with the ball. I'm not trying to put the ball right in the divot there, the, the you know, low point. I want to be to the side where there's a little bit of a hill. Um, and then we might target, you could target anything kind of in this region and even up a little bit towards the rhomboids. So any of that uh, is up for grabs here. The one thing I would say is you want to avoid your kidneys. <laughs> um, and those are going to be, you know, at the low end of your ribs. Uh, kind of between your ribs and your low back. So you're gonna know if you hit that because it's gonna feel super tender. And if it does, I would get off that. It's a different feeling than if you're on tender fascia that's just tight and restricted. Um, so just be aware. If you need to Google it and look up where your kidneys are, please do that. Uh, but you should be able to tell if you're on it. All right, so you're gonna start this one on your back, feet, up by your butt and then the ball is going to go uh i'm holding in my left hand here it's going to go on my left side and of course i said this before but i'll say it again you don't want to be on your spine so we're looking to put that ball this would be on my spine i'm looking to put it just to the left of it and then you kind of just want to suss out how does that feel does it feel like an okay spot am i too on the ribs am i too close to the spine I'm on my kidneys. <laughs> um, if it feels okay, you could continue, but maybe it's not even like the best spot. Maybe there's a better spot in terms of your actual erectors. Um, and you may not know this till you actually try the technique. Um, I like to try this one, uh, really start my erectors um, when I'm doing this up above the ribs a little bit. So I'm like um, inside that rib area of my back but close to the spine and not on the spine right on the that erector there that way i know i'm not on my kidneys and it's a great place to just start exploring my erectors and from there you could go up towards the rhomboids or you could go down a little bit towards that ql and you have some options here so i just want you to know as you do this these are all suggestions that i'm offering you uh, and there is no right or wrong way really to do this except that your goal is to kind of compress the ball a bit as best you can with whatever you know weight or leverage you have in this position and then kind of scrub um, use a scrubbing movement or a little bit of shifting back and forth and this will make sense to you in a minute <laughs> um, but that's really the goal so with that in mind feel free to make it your own if you figure out a better way to do it that works for you so here are the guidelines if you just want to start with something super simple you're going to lift your hips off the ground and then just shift them side to side. And that's actually like kind of intense already. Just the weight coming up might be a lot, right? So if you wanted to pause here and just breathe a little bit, you could do that. Um, but that shifting side to side, you're trying to kind of shear the fascial fibers apart as best you can in this position with your weight on the ball. Um, and you might notice if you keep going, you're gonna end up in your ribby area more towards your lats. So we probably are actually grabbing a little bit of lat fascia here um, and maybe even pulling it apart from the erectors, but the goal is really to stay right close to the spine. So the, these are small movements, right? They're just tiny little shifts that create sensation here where the ball is. So this is option number one, just hips up, shifting side to side, put your hips into it, <laughs> um, but you want to go slow, right? You don't want to go too fast. Um, and then the other option here would be putting this left uh, ankle on your right leg by your knee um, and then you can kind of push into it or pull it in and see if that does anything. Um, and if you notice something down here, which is most likely, uh, I like to actually then come up again and kind of get into it but with more of a twist. So instead of just shifting side to side, now I'm actually twisting into that ball a bit. So it's kind of grabbing that fascia and then twisting it and pulling it and shearing it a little bit. So we're combining a pin and stretch with some shearing here and that feels pretty good. Uh, so that's what I would probably pick for me that I like the best, but I like combining them as well. Um, and the other thing might just be kind of pulling it in and rocking a little bit but that's not gonna do a whole lot as far as like pinning and actually stretching um, or releasing the fascia there. So again, these are just kind of options. 
uh, and then you could, of course, move up. So you want to maybe spend 30 seconds to a minute on each spot. If you're first doing this, you want to spend a little more time exploring what this technique does for you and how to actually make it effective for your body and your fascia, your erectors, because we're all different. Uh, but once you feel like you've kind of nailed it for yourself, it's again, I mean, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Um, you don't want to stay on there too long. Fascia can actually respond to too much work by contracting to protect you. Uh, so 30 seconds to a minute, come off, you know, maybe wiggle it out or get up and walk around. Um, and then you could, right, like go up or down, whatever you feel like you need to do. I'm not gonna show you all of them because we'd be here for a while, but that's pretty much it. So you do the exact same thing on the next spot, whether it's higher or lower. All right, well, there you go. That's my erector fascia release using a tennis ball. I'd love to hear your experience using this technique. So if you give it a try, then share your experience uh, in the comments below. I'm definitely gonna come read them and talk to you guys about this one. I've been loving this uh, technique lately just to kind of love up my back a little. I don't really have low back pain or back pain, anything like that in the spine. Uh, so it's just kind of a nice one to do for myself. So share your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you there. And if you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe. We have new videos going out every single week, every Monday and Wednesday. And I share special stories and do some uh, trainings via email that I don't do anywhere else. So I hope you'll join my email community and you can do that by clicking the link below in the description. And if you do, you're gonna get some free resources from me. So we have some PDF guides, some demos, some exciting things depending on when you actually land on this video. So make sure to check that out, join my email community. I'd love to welcome you to my little world of fascia. <laughs> so thanks so much for being here and I'll see you next time.